Obamacare is hurting our economy. Uh, it's hurting middle class families. Uh, and it's hurting uh, the ability for employers to create more jobs. Uh, and so the House, I'm sure, at some point next year, will move to repeal Obamacare because it should be repealed and it should be replaced. Uh, how about the individual mandate? There are a lot of Democrats and Republicans uh, who believe this is unfair. Uh, just because uh, we may not be able to get everything we want doesn't mean that we shouldn't uh, try to get what we can. All right. Good for John Boehner. He spoke earlier today. Uh, joining us now uh, on the Molesburg panel, I might add, is the co-host of Steele and Unger and senior political contributor for Forbes.com, Rick Unger, and senior fellow at FreedomWorks, Tom Borelli. And uh, let, let me ask you, uh, Tom, um, we had David Vitter on uh, before this, uh, this uh, segment here, and uh, talking about the executive order that the president said yesterday he will issue and will sign before the end of the year on immigration reform, uh, Vitter said it goes beyond, you know, uh, a bull and a red flag and all that kind of stuff. He said it's, it's unconstitutional is what it is, and it, it usurps the Constitution. Well, you know, what's funny about that is President Obama himself said in 2011 he only had so much power as the president. He said Congress passes the law and he has to execute the law. Now, I don't understand what President Obama is going to do. I don't know if President Obama understands what he's going to do. But clearly, if he tries to write the law from the executive branch, it is unconstitutional. And then Congress would have to deal with that appropriately. What about it, Rick? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I can't discount what Tom's saying. We, it remains to be seen what's included in the executive order, how it's phrased, whether or not it fits within the powers of the executive, or if it's, in fact, a congressional power that he's usurping. What I'm a little bit more curious about, to tell you the truth, I mean, obviously, if he does it, depending on what's in it, it will get a massive reaction. I'm wondering if it'll motivate Congress to supersede it by actually legislating something. The one thing that the speaker didn't talk about this morning is the immigration bill that the Senate passed that he sat on throughout the entire last Congress. So maybe it'll motivate some action from Congress, which I would agree would be a better way to go. Could you imagine, uh, Rick, the chaos if uh, Obama signs an executive order and then the Congress comes back with something that changes oh they can do that's not chaotic at all steve that's absolutely within the power of congress no 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 but i mean if you tell these people who would be affected here's the deal and then somehow that gets you know uh, modified or changed uh, it's seven months from now and now it's not the deal anymore i mean the, this government well, wait, can't these, even run health care these people are when you say these people remember that they're illegals we're talking right about, well, that's what i meant the here. people affected so yeah. what are they going to do i mean if congress uh, does decide to act and hopefully they would act much more quickly than seven months from there you know you'd want them in fact if obama's smart he'll put a date on that executive order which is a little bit off into the future to give congress time to do it before the executive order takes effect well tom doesn't that make sense what rick just said instead of saying as he said yesterday i'm going to sign it before the end of the year i've waited long enough he specifically said we can't wait on this it can't be put off but and he could have said here's the date here's three months hence six months hence whatever I'm giving Congress, the new Congress, an opportunity in the spirit of, you know, working together. But if you don't, then I'm going to do it. But instead, he's saying, I'm going to do it. Well, let's and wait and see well, the I order. Don't, I, don't think, you know, I don't think, you know, President Obama should be, you know, making these grand promises and, and veiled threats. Look, in the first two years, he could have passed any immigration reform he had wanted to, and he let that pass. Now there's an emergency? It, you know, it's just all political the way I see it. Rick? I, I don't really see how that, I mean, that may be true. I'm not quite sure how it's relevant. We all agree that we still have to deal with the immigration question. We may just disagree on how to do it. But Steve, don't infer from what the president said yesterday. You might be right. He may just sign something and say it starts tomorrow. But I actually think that what I s suggested is far more likely. I think he will put a, uh, a future date on it. I couldn't tell you how far in the future to give Congress time to act. All right, very interesting. All right, folks, we'll be back with Rick Unger and Tom Borelli with uh, part two of the uh, Molesburg panel. We have a lot to discuss. Uh, but first, did you know that what you say at work could come back to haunt you? Here to tell you more about workplace speech. Yeah, and, and this guy was up here in our studios earlier today. Always love uh, seeing the great Alan Dershowitz. Uh, and he was here. And uh, this is very important because, you know, we're, we're becoming a more and more politically correct uh, society and the workplace is affected. So here to talk about all of this is Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz with You and the Law.
did you ever say anything to someone in private that you didn't want other people to hear, a nasty comment about your boss, maybe a sexist joke? Of course you did, admit it. The controversy over Donald Sterling's comments, the ones that were secretly recorded by his girlfriend, actually cost him his uh, NBA franchise. Could you lose your job over something you say privately, even to a spouse or a close friend outside of the workplace? Legally speaking, it all depends. First, in such a case, a court would look at what your job is. If your job is owning a professional basketball team, you may very well lose the team or have to sell it because the very revelation of your private statements, even though they may have been obtained illegally, could make you unsuitable to continue your ownership. Yes, even if you did nothing actually wrong. If, on the other hand, you were a state or federal civil service employee and made the same comments as Sterling, you would almost certainly be able to keep your job. You can be fired from such a position only if it was proven that you engaged in deliberate wrongdoing. But every job is different with different rules. If you have a contract, if you're a union member, if you have job tenure, you're likely to have greater protection. Uh, most Americans employed by private firms are in a category known as at will, meaning employers can fire you for almost any reason. And so your right to free speech is applicable between an individual and the government, but that right doesn't always apply with a private employer. If you post something on your own Facebook, Twitter, or other social media that your employer doesn't like, and you find out you've been fired, as unfair as that sounds, it might very well be legal. Now, there are exceptions. Federal law prohibits the firing of employees based on discrimination or for retaliation. Also, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 offers some other protections, but not everyone is protected. For example, a priest, a minister, or a rabbi who privately expressed disbelief in God might be acting within his constitutional rights, but might not be suited to continue in his clerical role. You have a right to free speech, but be careful how that right might impact on your employment and always act accordingly. I'm Alan Dershowitz for Newsmax TV.